I hate to break the fishing news up here, M. Chuck, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for, like, an orgasm. Might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get uh, today. Episode 233 of the Real Life Podcast. Hello, I'm Tyler Uremchuk, and our intro is about 23 seconds, and a lot happened during that intro. Uh, right when I fired it, Jay disconnected from the call. Chalmers wasn't here, and it was looking like it was just going to be the Uremchuk and Bag Milk show to start. And then during the intro, not only did Jay show up, but, the Chal- but Chalmers showed up as well. So this is exciting. We got almost a full cast. Wanye is going to pop by at some point, but he's on hold with some company, and he says he doesn't want to lose his spot in line. So, well, there you go. He's been on hold for like an hour and 20 minutes now. Yeah. He does a screenshot. That's insanity. He's, he's pot committed. He's got to see it through. I don't get places that don't have the callback feature. Like, mm. shout out to Shaw, because they have the callback feature. But if you're waiting for 55 minutes or something, they'll say, just type in the number you want us to call you back at. And then they call you back when you're number one in the queue. Like, it's oh. genius. That, I, almost, I, I, I love that feature, but I always miss the callback. <laughs> what is the limit for waiting on hold for something if they don't have that oh. feature like how because i think one is an Five interesting minutes. spot here but like it once you're on hold and you're like it's been 10 minutes 15 minutes and you're kind of like at what point do you just dig in and go i can't even afford to hang up now it depends on the severity of the call fair so are you calling the government are you calling to change your phone plan are you what like it all depends on the severity of it you know who would never, ever leave you waiting for over an hour? Our friends at Oodle Noodle, who sponsor the podcast. Oodle Noodle, 14 shops in Edmonton, number 15, is coming soon. I recommend you try the green onion cakes. Green onion cakes are a staple in Edmonton, and Oodle Noodle, in my opinion, makes the best ones. So check them out. Next time you're hungry, next time you need dinner, next time you're maybe you're trying to impress your significant other, just bring home a bunch of green onion cakes from Oodle Noodle. Just a quick story. snack. I was so excited when I was in, uh, I went to Canmore this weekend and I uh, pulled up, skipped the dishes for the Saturday night dinner. And I, before I realized that I hadn't changed, that Oodle Noodle was a possibility. And I had, I was like, whoa, they got one in Canmore? Like, how did I not know about this? And I was so excited to get it. And then I realized I'm an idiot and I hadn't changed the address yet. Can you imagine if well, you just well, ordered it and someone from out. Edmonton huge. drove out? <laughs> We are planning our southern expansion at the moment, so there will come a time where hopefully you are in Canmore and you see us legitimately on your Skip the Dishes app. Don't say we never do anything for you, Flames fans. When you're Ah. when you're when you're outside of Edmonton and you see a nice little Edmonton um, startup that's made it out, that's when that's when it's like next level. It's like okay, these 14 locations in Edmonton, that's unbelievable. But the minute I see one in like St. Albert. Or not St. Albert, uh, oh. like Red Deer or something. <laughs> in Red Deer or something, that's when I know, oh my God, this thing's big. Uh, well, my dream for Oodle Noodle is to get it uh, all across Alberta uh, and then Saskatchewan. And then that's when I probably, uh, my work here is done uh, moment happens and I have to turn it over to actual professionals. <laughs> Once it's out of the prairies, you're like, fuck, too big for me. I can't do it. Yeah, I don't I don't know these people. I'm a prairie person. I only know how to talk to prairie people. I only want to deal with prairie people. Let the let the pros deal with everyone else. Get one in Moose Jaw. Oh, that would be an honor. There's a lot of demand in Moose Jaw. You don't know this, but a lot of times when I so Moose Jaw is about depending on the situation and who I'm driving with, it's anywhere between a six and a half hour to an eight hour drive. Uh, and I get requests to order Oodle Noodle on my way out of town and drive it to Moose Jaw so they can eat it cold or the next day. That's a food, like Oodle Noodle in general is a food where if you order a ton of it and you just have it as leftovers for like two, three days, it holds well, right? Like it reheats good. Oh yeah, I actually like it cold too. And then mm-hmm. one of the things that I can't, I What's can't remember, I think this was my, our Aussie friends, um, when Josh, Josh Brown was here. His big thing is he likes to take leftover oodle noodle and leftover Thai food and turn it into an omelet the next morning. You know what I like about oodle noodle is that I believe that those boxes are like one of the greatest thermo coolers I've ever seen because 
you open that stuff too. I probably still you probably get the moose jaw and that stuff be still hot. Oh, there's still some boxes. temperature in there for sure. Yeah. Oh my god. Your M truck, you got uh, you got a party going on in the back or what's going on there? Well, uh my doorbell rang. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah? How's that oh, going for you? Oh, it's my Lululemon order from last weekend. That's a very exciting moment for me. I guess it is. You got, to, you got yourself some pants to make your butt look nice or what? Yeah, some ABCs. Oh, yeah. My butt needs all the help it can get because I am a skinny bitch. <laughs> ah, all right. Where should we begin on today's podcast? I sent out a tweet asking people if there's anything they want us to talk about specifically. Not even asking for questions at this point. Just straight up asking people to do my job and prep the podcast for me. I've got an idea, Tyler. Yep. What did you make of this Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews practicing together in Arizona thing? I am not one of the people who automatically hates everything Toronto. I'm a big I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. That's, you know, not Toronto, but close-ish. Closest NFL team to Toronto. I love the Raptors. Diehard Blue Jays fan. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the Leafs, I don't hate the Leafs. I hate a small portion of Toronto Maple Leafs fans. And as far as the players on the ice there, I mean, I love watching Austin Matthews play hockey. I'll say it. I'm not not embarrassed to say that. And watching him and Connor play together, I think, you know, I know some Leafs fans like to throw it out there and be like, oh, they're practicing for when they reunite in Toronto or unite in Toronto. And what I would say is Austin Matthews is a UFA a lot sooner than Connor McDavid is. So maybe Matthews and McDavid are practicing for when they one day get to be in Edmonton together. You know what makes me mad about Toronto? It's the perception that they have about some of their players and the way that people talk about it. I was listening to another podcast, and they had Brendan Shanahan on it. And these guys were actors that were that were running the, that were the hosts of the podcast. And when they talked about Brendan Shanahan, one of them's a big Leafs fan, and they said that he's you know he's talking about the great job he's been doing there. And he's like, and then we got our Wayne Gretzky, we got him, and now we have him, and we're building around him. And I was like. Wait a minute. Like, let's bump the brakes on Austin Matthews being that good. I never understood the Austin Matthews, like, Connor McDavid comparison. No. I don't get it. No, I don't think they're in the same league. Like, people like to be like, oh, is he 1B? Is he 1C? Like, is he in that debate? And I think it's it's McDavid, it's, it's McDavid and McKinnon. And, I mean, to an extent, Crosby, because you need to respect him enough and still have him a bit in that conversation. Of course. But, like, let's be honest right now, in terms of impactful players in the NHL, it's McDavid, it's McKinnon, and that's the group. Like, that's Tier 1. And the Tier 2, I think, is when you go Crosby, Dreisaitl, I have Matthews in there personally, because, I mean, the way that guy scores goals this early in his career, I mean, you you can sit there and hate him because he's on the Leafs, but you can't hate what he does in the league. Um, And I think that's where those players come in. he's talented. Crosby kind of reminds me of, like, Tom Brady, you know, like, is he the best? Is, is he as good as Wade Gretzky ever was? Probably not. He did a job. He, he won a bunch of cups. Just a good guy, you know, like good franchise guy. And like Connor McDavid would be like the Patrick Mahomes. Comes in and after like yeah. two, three seasons, there's guys saying that Patrick Mahomes is just on the way and to being the greatest that ever played the game. And you're like, I see it, right? Patrick Mahomes has the- deserves a lot of respect. Patrick Mahomes has the team around him to already be winning this early in his career, though, right? And that's kind yeah, of the disappointing about, I mean, the people listening to this podcast and the three of you don't need me to say that Connor McDavid wasn't given that luxury. Like, I But mean, other, th- other than, like, Travis Kelsey at tight end, I mean, guys like Tyreek Hill, they were they were not touted to be as good as they are. But, yeah, you but know, you put them with a guy like Mahomes, I mean, then... But the defense... Coach. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but it wasn't... Yeah, good defense, but... They were, you couldn't just like plug and play somebody else and I believe have that good of a team. No, no, you can. That's a good point as well. Um, How about Mahomes just walking it down for a win, like casual? Like a minute and 30 seconds left and not a single sweat beat on the guy's brow. And, he, and you just know, you just know they're going to win. It's pretty, ama- it's pretty amazing to watch it happen. That's- that was supposed to be Aaron Rodgers yesterday too. Oh yeah, my God. And that was my on pick. That. That was my pick, and I'm getting sick of losing by like a field goal at the end of the game yeah. here. Yeah, I put the money on really you, Tomer. I, um, I felt like you knew yet. I felt like he knew what you were talking about here. Well, dude, like they have, I think, was like 17 unanswered points in the third and fourth and in, in the second half. So, like they were poised to win that game. They were they were doing whatever they wanted for the first half, and I thought I was money in the bank, and I couldn't believe when I saw the final score. 
Yeah, that was. Oh really man, cool. yeah, that was that was so, a tough one. I I was really really confident in the Vikings and the Chiefs to cover, and that it was one of the worst betting days of my life yesterday. It was not fun. Oh, uh, you you knew that Cheaters game was going to be close. There was there there there's that that's that like that was a battle. And just the funny with all the the backstory with like the Raiders doing the victory lap around Arrowhead when they won last time. Like I love the bad blood between those two teams. The funny thing was, like, I went to live bet that when the Chiefs were down by a touchdown or something like that, and they were still so heavily favored. It didn't even really make sense to do anything. Yeah. And you mentioned Mahomes just, like, coolly going down the field and finding Travis Kelsey, who didn't have anyone within, like, a 10-foot radius of him in the end zone, which is wild. Like, that's just confidence, right? That's just, you know you're going to be able to do it. You know you got three, four weapons you can rely on as you head down the field. Like, there's just no panic in that man's game. No, no. Did but, you see the best? Did, did you see the best picture from this weekend? Uh, unfortunately, Joe Burrow, the number one pick overall, went down with a knee injury. Pretty gruesome thing. Awful thing. And then they, there was a second pick overall in the draft. Chase Young was in that game uh, on the defensive end there. And um, there's a picture of him giving him kind of a head bump uh, mm-hmm. while Burrow's is being carted off. And I gotta say, that's the picture of the season. I mean, it. You can see. Just like, man, I hammered you like a quarter ago as hard as I could. I've wanted you to be out of this game. And uh, you could see it in his eyes. He was just like, I feel so bad for this guy. Like, this guy's a football guy and he, and he cared. I loved the picture. I thought it was great. I couldn't believe the guy got it that close with yeah. all those people around. If you saw how many people were around, that mm-hmm. photographer deserves some credit for that because it's just, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a brutal sight to see. So, your M check to go back. You said McDavid's in Arizona. Yeah, he's uh, on the ice in Arizona, skating with Austin Matthews. I guess I would imagine there's a couple other pros down there that are a part of their little quote unquote cohort. But there was a picture that came out of the two of them, and I saw a Coyotes logo on the board. So I'm assuming they are in Arizona, um, working out, getting ready for the season. I guess. Oh uh, yeah. I Where hope. Matthews is from? Yeah. Yep. yep. Man, he's a product yeah. of the of, of NHL expansion. He is, he absolutely is. Um, and wouldn't that be like you talk about like everyone? Oh, McDavid, he's, he's, he's going to LeBron James it. He oh, is for sure. Yeah. I'm, I honestly <laughs> think he is. Like when you think about five years or whatever it'll be now, like four years from now, he's he signed that contract to the Leafs to bring him pretty much right to unrestricted free agency, if I'm not mistaken. It is. And uh, man, I think there's a chance he the Leafs might still be in some cap trouble then. And maybe he just goes, you know what? It'd be cool to be the guy in Arizona and go back to my hometown and like help grow the game there and all that stuff. It'd be great for the league, I think, if you went there. Although, just to counter, I'm sure he would like that his paycheck's clear. Yeah, seriously. That's, that's a great point as well. And uh, there is something to be said about being the guy in Toronto as well. I, from what I hear, it's a pretty big market. Uh, I, so I put out the call. Anyone have any ideas for what we should talk about today on the podcast? And Electronic Jordan said, idea for Chalmers Construction Corner, tell people to turn their humidity down with the outdoor temperature to avoid mold in the attic. Is that something people should be doing, Chalmers? In the winter? Turning the humidity down in your house in the winter Mm -hmm. to control mold in the attic. Yeah. Fact or fiction? Well, well, so I'm going to have to think this one through because I've never actually heard that before. Now. In the winter time, in, you have a, hum, a in your humidifier. You have settings for summer and winter um, because in the winter months it does get uh, drier everywhere. Obviously, everybody knows that cold air is much drier, and uh, so you need to have your humidifier going. Um, a, a comfortable humidity in a house is around twenty-five to thirty-five percent. That's going to keep that's going to keep your your noses your noses. Uh, you know, not dry, and it's going to keep your hardwood from shrinking, and it's going to be good for your house. Now, to get into the attic and have yourself mold, you're going to have to have a couple things happen, and that would be a lot of heat loss from your house. Um, when you got good or bad insulation, you know, it's, that's, uh, that's a difference. You can go to a thing on, on, in Edmonton or, you know, everywhere, but it's called myheat.ca, and when you go on that website, what you do is you punch in your address, and it will show you a thermal picture of your neighborhood, your actual house, and it will show you uh, color-coded to how your house loses heat, where exactly it's losing heat. It's very cool. Um, it'll show Sir, you what was that website again? Yeah, yeah I've never heard of this. 
It's called MyHeat.ca. So go to MyHeat.ca, put okay. in your address, and you can go and you can look at your house. And it will show you if it's blue. That means you are losing, I believe it's, I think their color coordinating is, is, is backwards. I think it's like if it's blue, you're losing a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. Or if it's red, you're losing a lot of heat. But you get a thermal image of your house. And it shows you basically how your attic insulation is acting. Now, attic insulation, if you have a brand new house these days, we are keeping it to, you know, code is around R40, which would be about 10 inches of insulation. Mm-hmm. But R50 is what we do ours at. And it's, it's, it's about a foot of blown-in insulation. Or if you have to do baths, you can actually buy attic insulation that is around 10 inches once it pops up, and you can put it in. That's what she said. To yep. lose the heat. <laughs> to lose heat into your attic, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it other than to beef up the insulation. But a lot of people lose attic, lose heat through their house, through their attic hatch. Um, a lot of people that do finishing carpentry and, and, and build houses, they don't pay enough attention to attic hatches, and they make them very thin. And that is where a lot of heat escapes. If you don't have a good seal around your attic hatch, or your actual attic hatch doesn't have enough insulation in it, you will lose heat through that. That will then, you know, if you're losing a lot of heat, attics are whatever the temperature outside is. If it's, and, and it's kind of like multiplied. If it's really cold outside, it's really cold in the attic. If it's really hot outside, it's really hot in the attic. And that's normal. You just need airflow. So what Electric Jordan is saying is, you know, something I haven't really heard of or had to, like, basically monitor in houses. Um, but that's my view on attics and just basically how to keep them flowing. Basically, how you get airflow in your attic is all around the house is your soffit. You see them. They're the overhangs on your house. Usually it's metal. It can be different colors. It's got vent holes in it. And what happens is, is that air goes in from the outside and it goes up through kind of the, the, the soffit into the attic and then get sucked out from the vent. Like, so usually you see old whirly birds on the top of houses. That was kind of an old fashioned way to suck that air through the soffit. And as long as you have good airflow in your attic, you really shouldn't have uh, any type of mold buildup. And, you know, you, if you're getting lots of heat loss and lots of condensation in your attic, you really have a bigger problem. You have an insulation problem and that's something that you're going to need to discuss with a uh with a, like a, a company that can come and blow in i've actually had a couple of my friends who contacted me recently to blow in attic insulation what is so funny about that <laughs> yeah just blow it in it's all good just that's you, you listen don't pull it out blow it in that's what she said okay Chalvers, i have learned so much from this this is actually impressive this is my heat.ca my house is old and literally the walls are paper thin i don't think there is one millimeter of insulation let alone 10 inches and i can feel you feel the walls and it's cold so i want to mine's going to be lit up whatever if it's light electric blue or red like it looks like that on fire i need to see this but see it doesn't do wall um heat loss it only does ceiling heat loss okay you're not going to see a thermal image of the sides of your house you're only going to see the outline of the 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 roof and that and and so that's what it shows you for your heat loss um, for your walls, if you have an older house, back in the day, on a two by four wall, they only used to put like their three and a half inch bath of insulation, which is like an R10, right? These days, as for code, we're putting R20 in a basement even, where a frost line is only getting like, you know, three to four feet down your basement wall. So it's kind of been overkill in the basement, but I, I, I mean, I appreciate it. It helps with, with, um, energy efficiency. That's for sure. All right. Well, what would was... you say, like, Chalmers, just if you walk through all that, like, what would you say is, like, a ve- we talked about the hose coming off. Yeah. What is another basic mistake people are making right now in the winter? In the winter with their houses? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, uh, let's see. I mean, heating and cooling and, and ventilation in your house is pretty, you know, like, I don't know, man. Like, in the winter time, there's not much, like, there's, it's, there's not many things you need to do to winterize a house. They're kind of self, you know. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-sustained. Self-sufficient. Self- Self-sustained, yeah. yeah okay. um, it depends on older houses. You know, I haven't had to deal with too many older houses in the winter. Um, it, You know, frozen water lines is just the biggest one. You know, if you have a spot in your house where you know it's always cold and you have frozen water lines, I mean, that's going to be your biggest disaster. But as for stuff in the winter to do to your house, that's, I have, 
to think about that one, to be honest with you. How often should I change I really my furnace about. filter? Oh, every three months. Every, every three, three months, months absolutely. Huh? I'm going to get on that then. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> go buy a four-pack and you're good for the year. I and, got the uh, pack. I just need to figure out how to do it. Never done it before. Yeah. And so what happens is, uh, like, when, you, when your <laughs> furnace filter gets mm-hmm. gets really bunged up, it, it, it's stopping the airflow from coming through. And what it's really doing is it's making your furnace less efficient, okay. um, which is going to cost you money. And that's, you know, so the furnace filter, I know that some of them can be a little more money than you would expect for something that's just, a, you know, that simple to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's worth it because when, you're, when your furnace has to work harder to pump your house full of heat, it's having trouble sucking the cold air back through the furnace. It's just working harder. It's, it's, a lot, like it's making the life of your furnace go down. And uh, it's just, that's one thing that you really should maintain. I, with all water heaters, I mean, not really much to do with them. They can either work or they don't. I don't know. So, and those are the main, you know, those are the two main arteries of your house. And so, I don't know. That's about it. All right. Good stuff. This has been the housing corner with Chalmers. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that was oh, good. And okay. You know what? One last thing. So I'm going through this right now. I had a, a grad heater that wasn't the most efficient grad heater in the world. And I didn't have very good grad insulation. And I got a new, I got a new heater without doing anything to the insulation. This one's a little bit more intense. At 10 degrees, it feels a lot hotter in there than it used to at 10 degrees because the heat, it happens faster. And so what it's causing is my um, snow on the roof to melt, right? And if you go around, this myheat.ca thing too, if you go to your house and your house has less snow on it than most of the other houses on its roof, pretty good chance you've got some heat loss up there. That stuff is melting too fast, right? Oh. And so what happens when it starts to melt and then drain down but then it freezes at your ease trough is that's when it starts to um it starts to basically wick backwards it freezes backwards underneath the uh the 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 shingles and it starts to lift them and that's bad and so when you see people that are taking off like the first three feet of snow from their from their roof you know some people think it's because of the weight of the snow they just don't want it on there it's mostly for damming it up i mean when ice starts to dam around your ease trough that, that could be a problem, and that could really cause you some roofing problems in the future. So that's, I guess, one more thing you triggered my memory with, uh, with that. So are you a believer of shoveling your roof? If you have that problem, if you start to see that problem, if you don't see that problem and you're just, you know, you have a good uh, seal on your roof and you're not seeing any ice dam, just leave it. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't stop anything. But mm-hmm. a lot of ice damming can ruin your ease troughs. It can make them pull out. Those are only, hung, like, fastened on by, you know, either long nails or brackets and they're flimsy they're they're they're, you know they could bend them but the real problem is is the wicking backwards of the ice um and that can cause shingles to lift therefore causing water to get underneath them in the worst place possible and then they when they melt it'll go into your attic so do you so it's funny you mention that because every year in my townhouse complex they do it and i asked why and they said it's a preventative measure would you agree with that yes it's preventing exactly what i just said it is fucking annoying, though, when I get a pile, shit ton of snow piled in my yard that I have to clear out. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Yeah, yeah it uh, sucks because it's all, yeah, when it falls and then it sticks together and it usually hardens up a bit, it's not a lot of fun. All right. There we go. Winterize your house, courtesy of Chalmers. Cool. Uh, construction corner. Brought to you by myheat.ca. Brought to you by myheat.ca, which is in no guys, way an did, official sponsor. Did you guys all do it? Uh, I don't have my laptop for sure. I will. And you, I will it, after this call. I think you have to like download some software or something like that. No. Really? Hell no. Okay. Well, nope. maybe I'm on you the wrong is. website. Well, it's just my heat man. That hard. All right. <laughs> 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 and but literally, you just go. You just literally go like it says heat app, and then you just go launch platform. It launches the platform. Oh. You select your city oh. right there, Edmonton. Type in your address. So oh, this is like a local phone. thing, hey? Well, oh. it's, 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 it's Alberta wide. Okay. So you can basically look at a whole heat map of Edmonton. You can tell that downtown and like, you know, the surrounding areas, the older areas are all red. And then you get to the outer portions of Edmonton where the new houses are. Yeah. And it's very much more green. And so if you live in a green area, let's call, let's say you live in. Um, My house is green. Oh, mine is so, mine is so red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. So go to the Hamptons, and you you know what? I'll give some of those houses that might be really red in the Hamptons, which is a new area. 
Those might be under construction, so let's give those a little benefit of the doubt. Okay. But if you live in the Hamptons and yours is yellow or red, mm, your builder might have just skimped out on your attic insulation. I don't I hate to tell you. My Mine apartment. is green. I've got a nice little green. Well done. My, my condo whole neighborhood, my up. whole block. If I go just <laughs> down the street, and they're yeah. all red hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not, I mean, it's an older neighborhood, man. Not many people focus too much on your attic insulation. You go up there and you might even have this stuff called vermiculite which is like an old um uh like it's almost wood chip you know like a hamster would live in yeah and uh <laughs> it's got like formaldehyde in it and it's, it's pretty oh, excellent. nasty shit yeah it's not good it's like pickled yeah gross. my complex isn't listed so i will never be able to find out unfortunately <laughs> where do you live well, I don't want to just share my address right here, but yeah, when what I, is your exact address? And post the code, <laughs> please. Exact. So people oh, can yeah, send... But you live in, in St. Albert, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but my complex oh, well, just then... isn't on here. The rest of St. No, Albert that's... is. Well, that's just, that's just weird. Yeah, I uh, honestly don't know. But uh, this is really cool. Yeah, you're right. Like, when you get to the older areas, it's, like, super, super red. But, like, all the new areas is very green. Yeah. What a fascinating website. Thank you, Chalmers. I hope our listeners have just as much fun with this as we did. Yeah, if you, I actually, you know what? If you're listening to this right now and you check out your house, I want to know what color it is. Yeah, hit us up yeah. on social, Nation Real Life. Mm-hmm. And and this isn't this isn't me trying to get any anything out of this, but if you do have a problem and you don't know what to do, just send me a DM and I'll send mm-hmm. you and I'll tell you because so and 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 I'll give you a kind of a ballpark in a house. That's probably about 2,500 square feet, so therefore probably around like 1,000 square feet of roof. To get that all reblown in, it's around a dollar fifty a square foot. So you'd be looking at like around a $1,500 bill uh, to get your attic brought up to um, to uh, its standard of inflation. Now, that might seem like a hard upfront cost, yeah. but over time, you're going to save that money. It's going to help your furnace. It's going to help your house heat and it's gonna just it's another one of those preventative measures so i'm uh, i'm excited confused. to announce sorry i'm excited to announce um i'm moving in the new year if that's not the announcement uh and i'm going from my house which is red hot to the new house which is in a neighborhood all the houses at a minimum are yellow yellow orange red and then the house i'm moving into is the only green one nice I just realized the reason, like, because I live in an older townhouse, the reason mine's probably green is they just redid all the insulation in the roof when they did the siding, Chalmers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, that was just this summer. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you're, if, you're, if you're buying, if you're shopping for a house, maybe a good preventative measure to go back to the uh, something that maybe, like, uh, an inspector might not notice. I mean, they'll go and look in your attic, but they don't crawl through them because attics are the worst place in the world. If you have to go in it, you hate your life and it sucks, but... The fact is, is you might want to check this website to see how the place you're looking at is, and you know maybe throw that into the offer. Say blow in some new insulation in there because my house is red. Myheat.ca. Yes, yeah. the show. This Jeez. is the kind of stuff yeah. you get when you listen to the real life podcast. We're <laughs> saving you money. That was a real life topic, and I was actually interested the whole time too. In a way, we're almost paying you to listen to this podcast, especially if you're trying to get your Christmas shopping done. Because our friends at Twig and Berries have a holiday box. It's 150 bucks. Gets you a whole bunch of stuff. Gets you their Connor hoodie. Gets you a wallet, a tumbler, a pair of socks, a pair of their very own Nutsack brand. More stuff. I think I'm forgetting one thing. Anyways, 150 bucks. You can also use the promo code NATION15. Get 15% off your order at twigandberries.ca. So if you're trying to get your Christmas shopping done, our friends at Twig and Berries, they make great, comfortable stuff. And they're local as well, which is something I think we should be putting an emphasis on. I know Amazon is easy and convenient and all that stuff, but sometimes it feels good to support local. Twig and Berries is definitely that. While we're on the topic of local clothing, our friends at Nation Gear have some new stuff going on as well. While we're recording this podcast, it is going to drop. The product is going to drop while we record this podcast, which means if you're listening to it, it's already available. Nationgear.ca, the Blackout Collection is back. And one of my favorite hoodies of all time is on there as well. Uh, Jay, it's there's a snapback, there's a t-shirt, and there's two hoodies, correct? Well, there's a snapback and then the dad hat version oh, there, really? of that hat. So we're bringing back the OG Oilers Nation badge hat, but blacked out the badge. And that's going to be on a snapback and a 
curb rim, dad hat, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then we've got our uh, new black outline, uh, bringing back the old black on black logo hoodie, and then the new kind of theme for the Nation Blackout collection uh, in t-shirt hoodie uh, and also uh, a tube. So, oh, yeah, or a beanie, good. depending if you're a U.S. listener. Yeah, I need it. Um, I need it now. But uh, yeah, no launch today. So it's Black Friday Monday edition. Just because with the world being what it is, we thought it was better to give a longer runway for this, and also mm-hmm. make sure to allow for more time for for delivery. Just because sometimes shipping gets a little bit disrupted. It has been disrupted during all this. Double down with the fact that it's also Christmas coming up, so we wanted to give people. Uh, a lot of time uh, to get their orders in so we can make sure that we get them to you in time for Christmas. And I would like to say one thing. As one of the people on this podcast, the only person who doesn't bank a sweet red cent from this shit we do here, I say (laughs) that I would like to have one of the blackout hoodies and one of the snapbacks (laughs) in my mailbox. And if I do not get it, I will not be appearing on this podcast again for the rest of its eternity. They are your move. <laughs> <laughs> well, which hoodie? And Chalmers, you don't want a snapback. I only you wear snapbacks. Want, you want the dad hat. What's your you dad hat? Brim. Oh, I do want the dad hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need the dad hat. Well, you and know what? You, and then called, you let me know, know which hoodie. Like better. You let me know which hoodie. We need you. You're you're <laughs> our brand ambassador. How do we know about myheat.ca if it wasn't for you? Maybe we can get myheat.ca to pay for the hoodie. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding around. Um, you mentioned U.S. listeners, and uh, we do have listeners in places other than Alberta or Canada, and I'm looking at the stats right now. I can only get the all-time stats on this, but obviously the, our most downloaded country is Canada. Second is the United States. Can anyone guess what country numero three is on that list? Finland. Can I? Uh, Finland or Sweden. Probably yeah, Finland. I was going to say Finland. Australia. Or Ger- Actually, you know what? Germany. Ooh. I'm going to go. say Germany. Oh, Australia. We've got, some, yeah, we've got some good expat connection in Oh, so the the place we use for our for our podcast statistics says United Kingdom is number three. Wow. Um, but right behind it is actually Germany with Australia rounding out the top five. Hmm. So uh, there well, you go. Wait, 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 did I just miss number two? What did you say? It was? One was Canada. Two is United States. Yeah. Three was United Kingdom, Germany, and then Australia. Well, you want to know why? Why? You want to know why? You want to know why we're big in the UK? I, I, it's it's because of my abbey that exists there. Uh, is, we've got we've true. got some we've got some credibility in the UK. The Queen enjoys uh, the Downton name. That makes I don't sense. know oh, where yeah. <laughs> I don't know where Trev J Forty is from, but he just gave it a five star review. He might be from the UK. Uh, he says I've been listening for a couple of years now. First couple oh. of times I heard Chalmers, I thought, who is this guy and why is he talking over Mac T <laughs> and Laddie freaking Smith. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that one time he was at hockey school the same time as McTavish. I have to say now I've totally flipped. Chalmers is a goddamn rock star and his fashionably late entrances and rants about Oilers PR are the best. You guys rock. Keep it up. Killer show. There you go. A little love for Chalmers. That makes me feel good. Oh, that feels nice. You um, were also, you also weren't here uh, when a guy just asked you straight up in the reviews for a job, Chalmers. Yeah. Oh yeah. What did you want to do? Uh, let me see what do you need him to do? Yeah. He's moving to town. I don't know. Maybe I should go check out the reviews and get his number. <laughs> Could always use good guys. I'm going to find Fair out. Fair enough. Is Connor Lee on 97? <laughs> I know that for sure because I wrote it down on the paper. I don't think I don't that's remember. on his uh, driver's license, though. I don't think that's his real name. <laughs> no. It, it might be. good for him. Yeah. That's a commitment. That's a if, I did, if I did hire him, though, I'd always just call him Connor Lee on 97. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't even learn his name. So I want to shout out, I want to shout out a listener uh, for just the ongoing tremendous support that you see her, she's always put, you know, when she listens to the show, she's pushing on her social media. And if you look in, you know, she posts a photo, you'll see there's either a nation flag or a nation trinket. You know, she, 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 she's a big you know, supporter of nation beer and all this stuff. I really want to shout out whiskey woman. She comes yes. to Vegas with us. Mm-hmm. Like just so you know, we see, and we, we just want to say thank you uh, for everything you do and for all the support you give us. It's tremendous. And thank you. How about she this? She deserves some attention. As we head into the holiday season, how about we do a nation listener spotlight of the week? And I'll get a little questionnaire up, some basic questions about them. We'll get to know a listener better. If you know someone who listens to the podcast as a diehard fan, or maybe you are specifically a diehard fan of the podcast and you want to be featured, 
shoot us a DM and I'll fire back the questionnaire. Then every week I will, I'll read a spotlight about one nation real life listener. You're going to get 50 Photoshop DMs from Surveyor Brett in like three, two, one. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I'm fully you got to shout out Surveyor Brett. His, yeah. his Photoshop game and support as well uh, I, for everything. I need, to, I need to send that guy a new headshot because I'm getting real. <laughs> I mean, I took that picture with those green sunglasses as like a joke. And now it's every single goddamn yeah. picture he makes is that one. Yep. Um, anyways, that's, that's just okay. an idea. We still love it. We still love it. Um, we ha- have we heard from Tanner? No, I don't think so. Have we? Oh, Tanner, give us. I did actually. You know what? I did. I emailed Tanner, and he said I don't listen to the podcast. (laughs) What? What? (laughs) The fuck, Tanner? So yeah, so there's the update. Well, I hope she's broken up with you then by now, Tanner. (laughs) You didn't listen to me. Well, you clearly didn't get the advice he needed, and now his his relationships in shambles. Yeah, he's a he's a mailbag guy, but not a podcast guy. It seems fair enough. Isn't that just? Ridiculous, the ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I've been uh, really interested in clicking through the number of countries that were downloaded in. And there's a whole run of like maybe 20 countries where we have exactly one listen. One download yeah. all time in the history of the podcast. Which I think is hilarious. And I'm assuming it would be like people who listen to the show who like went on vacation and like, yeah, and like sure. downloaded it in the airport because like why else would we have one all time listener in Peru, right? Ooh, um, Bulgaria, one in Maybe Italy. Hey, we could probably say that's the number one hockey podcast in Peru. Yep, potentially. <laughs> Just take one. Uh, one all time in the Philippines, one in the Dominican Republic. Actually, Peru is on this list twice for some reason, yeah. which makes close to no that's sense. That's our new catch line. We're the number one hockey podcast in Peru. Good for mm-hmm. us. Potentially the number one hockey podcast in Vietnam, maybe. That's another one where we had one all time. Um, but anyways, I found that interesting. Uh, all that time, interesting. all time, twelve in Malaysia, which is also that could have honestly been me. I was trying to think of when the last time I was in Malaysia. Um, if, you're inter- if you're interested in the rest of the top ten, not that I'm sure very many people are, but I said Germany, Australia round out the top five. And then it goes Norway, Netherlands, New Zealand, China, and Switzerland. I don't know how accurate this information is, but that's the top 10 countries we're listening to. I imagine very accurate. Amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah. Global you. podcast. What a time to be alive. Can't be the number one podcast yes. in Peru without being global. Uh, what else do I have on my list here? I wanted to talk about the coffee club, but Wanya's not here yet. He's still on hold, which means it's getting close to two hours since he started this ordeal, and he's still on the phone with this company. Uh, I respect that he is still in there. Yeah. He's still in the fight. Fair. It's obviously important. And shame on, I'm guessing, yeah. Fuck. Shame on them for not having the callback feature. Yeah. Um, Heritage Classic was yesterday, 17 years ago. So yesterday was the well, 17 before, year when we were when we were doing prep, it was 18 years ago and then 28 years ago. Because we've learned that Tyler's math, your math is not your strong suit. Big numbers guy. Well, then usually <laughs> mental math is like a really good strong suit of mine. Like I'm usually pretty quick with numbers, but something about this Did you podcast. Ten thousand hours in. What's eight plus five? Thirteen. You said eight plus five, right? Well, that that took so long. Well, I didn't really you hear you first. Uh, you put your ten thousand hours in. So. That was a hilarious slip up with Jack Michaels when I couldn't do the math on what ten thousand hours would be. <laughs> uh, but also, okay, so yeah, when we were doing our prep for the podcast, I said the. Heritage Classic was on this day 28 years ago, <laughs> and I immediately <laughs> caught myself because I was like, wait, no, I was alive for the Heritage Classic, so that wouldn't make any sense. And then I said 18 years ago, forgetting that 2020 is not over yet as much as I'd like it to be. And then I finally settled on, or Bag Milk pointed out, that it was 17 years ago. Uh, what are your memories of the Heritage Classic? Were all three of you guys there? Chalmers, you want to go first? I didn't get to go. Oh, you didn't get to go. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, this was the very first one in Edmonton when it was minus 30, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I was there. I went there with my dad. Me and my dad decided we were going to do a little outing. And we actually took a bus from somewhere. I um, don't remember where. But we took the bus and we got there. And, like, the spectacle, the only thing I remember was how cold it was and how me remembering, like, how I was going to make it through it. We would go get a beer and we'd sit down. And within two sips, three quarters of that beer was frozen. And I just remember being like, I bundled up, but I don't think I'm long for this game. And we made it to the midway through the third period, and we had to go back to the bus. We were dying. That's the thing. Other than that, like, it was pretty cool. Only thing I other, another thing I remember about it, and tell me if I'm right, because 
it sounds right, but didn't Paulina Gretzky sing the national anthem for that game? Yep. yep. Really? Yeah. So, yep. uh, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that till today. Yep. Like 16-year-old yeah, yeah. Paulina Gretzky. Wow. Um, I, yeah. my memory of it is that I was six years old. Both my parents went, my Guido, my grandpa in Ukrainian, uh, he came to babysit me. That's what I remember. I just yeah, remember being, uh, I was, I was about 18 ish, roughly. I was upset that I couldn't get tickets. And at the time I was way too cheap to spend money on a scalps ticket for that game. But in hindsight, I probably was upset sitting there in that cold, even though the experience was very cool. Oh, I remember, yeah, not being able to get tickets and then just calling everyone under the sun the day of to see if one ticket could just fall from the sky and not being able to go. Meanwhile, I had friends in from Moose Jaw that got tickets that I was hosting that got ticket that, that I was able to go. So I, I got, I took care of them, got them to the game, and then had to go home and watch it. Mm. But had a fantastic bar night i remember uh after that we went to the globe downtown uh, oh nice r.i.p the just, globe yeah i remember and just uh, i thought was i went down as an epic night everyone was frozen um and uh yeah waiting out to get a cab that night because it was minus 30 to get home uh that was uh yeah i still have chills from that but great great bar night couldn't get into the game i love the I, I was reading some of the memories the other day and uh, some of the people that were bringing up, there was a streaker at that game. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. how many pops must that guy have had to make that decision? How many frozen beers? Yeah, holy shit. Because he's got to, so obviously he's got to get naked, then go run, then get caught. Tackled, yeah. And then, like, he's still probably outside for a long amount of time. Like, that guy must have literally frozen his bag off, his twig and berry off. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, guys said, you guys put on um so when uh instagram um the actor the canadian actor that snuck into the picture what's his name sean majunda majunda okay sean, sean majunda yeah so he how i need to know how how did he get on the ice to sneak into the final photo after the game of the alumni game was that yeah yeah how did he do that? That's amazing. Should DM him, get him on the pod to explain it. Actually, that'd be a great story. Yeah, and, and every everybody's looking at the camera except for him. He's yeah. looking yeah. up the right. He's looking away. Know, what the hell he's looking at? <laughs> he's an Edmonton yeah, actor, or a Canadian actor. He's a Canadian actor. Yeah. I'm gonna DM him after the show and be like, "Hey, do you want to hop on the pod and tell this story? Because that would be a great story." Yeah. That would be a great story. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw it. He, um, yeah, he. Uh, He's, he's got his own podcast. I'm not even sure what what else he's been in. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, no idea who he is. So I'd love to meet him. Yeah. Well, who does you got? Who does a nation O N Instagram? It's kind of like a it's kind of like a Wu Tang, a little bit. Oh. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll shoot this guy. You know, that, that, that's the oh, time you that you would know what he's on. The first thing that comes up on his credits is uh, this hour is 22 minutes. Oh yes! He was oh, playing. okay. I know exactly now who he is. Wow, that is well done. That's the second time in four days I felt really old when you said that. That was seventeen years ago, and the first time happened two days ago. But it was the tenth anniversary of Kanye West's album, "My uh, Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy." Yeah, which is which is probably one of my favorite like albums of all time. I still listen to it front to back on occasion. Hi. And uh, go ahead. I had one of those also Tomers with music when I was growing up, my band, like our group of friends when we were in L- like junior high and through high school was blink 182. Yeah. And enema of the state had its 20th anniversary a little while ago. <laughs> and I was like, fuck me. Really? God, unbelievable. Yeah. Every so often you get one of those, you don't realize how long it's been, but you put that number to it and it's just like, Holy smoke. Like that means I was 23 years old when I went to that, Heritage Classic with my parents, with my dad. Hmm. 23. Same age I am now. Yeah. What a time. What a time. Just wait till you get, just wait till you get your first one, Tyler, where you're like, oh man, I'm old now. 
yeah, like I don't think I have enough memories that long ago to be like, oh man, I can't believe how well, long ago that was. Because right? you're not old enough yet. Yeah, I know, that's, that's what okay, I'm You're not exactly old enough yet to be old. JR, do you guys, okay, do you want to get one? I can give you a way to get one. Okay. Uh, over the weekend and last night, I kept watching um, a limited series on Netflix, and it's called High Score. Have you guys heard of this yet? No. It's basically a documentary. I think it's about six episodes. They're about 40 minutes long. And it is the story of video gaming. It starts from the very beginning with Atari, how Atari came out. The very first scene is it is this guy talking about Atari. And he goes, I was one of the founders of Atari. I'm uh, one of the guys who, uh, you know, started the video game craze. And I am credited as making the worst video game of all time. And that is E.T. for Atari. It single-handedly, at one point, like, crashed the uh the video gaming industry it oh was, i heard about that they rushed it so hard for christmas the guy had like five weeks to make it and so he made it he presented it to steven spielberg it was absolutely god awful they they released it they sold a ton and at that moment when they sold all those and they knew that it wasn't very good and that they could rush a video game in five weeks they started doing it with a ton of games and it basically oversaturated like the, the 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 market for like the home console and people stopped buying them. And then oh. It wasn't resurrected again until Nintendo uh, USA, like Nintendo US, released their entertainment center, the NES, right? Mm. And so, like, yeah, like th there was a rush to market Atari, ColecoVision, all these things, and then all of a sudden it was like almost dead because of this game that was just so bad. And it's a really really interesting series, like. I'm only on episode two, and I just found myself just floored by the things. The, 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 the most popular, very first video game ever made that came to the USA and really, like, changed video gaming and, 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 and started, like, the, the arcade that we knew when we were kids was Space Invaders. And there was a pattern, a formula to Space Invaders. And it was the very first, like, the very first year Space Invaders came out, they came out with, like, the Space World Championship. It's just, it's awesome. If you guys like old video games, and, and you were, like, I was a kid when all this started happening, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think Atari came out when I was, like, well, three years before I was born. I think it was, like, late 70s. But then it goes into basically, like, how Donkey Kong just, like, became huge in, in uh, America, like, in the United States and Canada. And it basically started um, Mario, because Mario was, the, the the main character other than Donkey Kong of Donkey Kong, but he wasn't Mario at that time. He was just a blue guy that looked cool that jumped to try to save the princess, right? And it's just it was it's so cool to watch the progression of how this happened. And then to see like the old ads for Game Boy and the old, you know, what the NES came with and like when it came out and just it, it's awesome. You guys will love it. I guarantee if you are a product of the eighties or even the nineties. I mean I think even you guys who were yeah. born in the 90s will still love it because it just it's like the story of video gaming i think i would i remember like the my experience with quote unquote old video games was at my grandma's house she had uh the original nintendo the nes is what it would have been and she had the duck hunter game mm -hmm. you know where you'd have to shoot the tv oh, yeah. screen i loved that game when i was a kid it was great the when, technology behind it is still impressive when Unbelievable. When Nintendo first came out, that game was the game that came with the system. So mm. the system came with two controllers, the Zapper, and then Duck Hunt. And it was remarkably accurate for being something yeah. like the first of its kind. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, like, there's, they, they interview the guy who just simply made the sound effects for the game, right? And they're all, like, you see these guys now, and they're like 50, well, 60 years old, you know, and they're reliving making these games and going through like the moments of it right like how the, the guy came up with mario it's just man it's awesome and yeah i remember like nintendo was so cool and then you'd get like the power glove you remember the power glove have you ever had one yeah it was horrible what, it was yeah, only I mean, it was only good for one game for punch out because everything else you had to play it as if it was a console well yeah, yeah but and, and then they show games like, just like Excite Bike, games that you were as a kid, like, if I could get my hand, and it's, it's a no wonder that buying like an, 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 uh, an original NES is so hard to do right now, and they're really expensive, because like those, I, I'd give anything to go back and play like the catalog of games I had when I was a kid, 
like Stumble Dragon. Oh my god, I'd do anything to play those games. Contra and like Meteorite or Meteor Man or something. I don't even remember what it was called, but Bag Milk yeah. Jay. What, Anyways, what were your guys' first experience with video games? Like, do you remember the first console, first game you like fell in love with? Yeah, well, I've got a I've got an older brother that uh, he, he's he's a fair character. So we had an NES. So I remember playing Mario, Super yeah. Super Mario, the, the like the very first one. Mm-hmm. But my favorite game that really hooked me was Super Mario Three. Oh yeah, where you could time travel and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was it was Warp good. And I, yeah, and then they had the movie The Wizard that they kind of piggybacked off of that with Fred Savage. And if you loved Wonder Years, it was a fucking home run. Like. And then for me, I had a I had a game called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Turtles in Time, and it yeah. was probably my favorite game of all time. And if I could find it right now, I would probably still play it. That's I can great. still tell you the first level of that game, walking down and just and, and I'd always be Leonardo. I don't know why. Did you? Who were you always? I was always. Uh, I liked my. I always thought nunchucks were cool. And I liked Donatello because uh, I felt like he had height. The reach was important. The staff the had range. Was. He had a big staff. Yeah, it was good. But I, I, it's so funny how you remember certain parts. It's just a big staff. Big staff. Uh, but I love those games, man. I just, I'm going to get nostalgic here. But I think if you're, if you're, if you're like me, you're going to absolutely love this thing. It was so good. My first gaming experience, I was a kid visiting my aunt house in Killarney, Manitoba. So I have a cousin that was maybe 10 years older than me. Um, and they had an Intellivision. Whoa. That's old school. And I, my first ever game I played, because this was mind-blowing, because I'm like, what? You could do this on a television? It was um, Frogger. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. That's cool. uh, and then my first console was an NES, and then, yeah, Super Mario was legit. I was even talking this weekend um, with some buddies about our first cell phone and how now you can play all these games right on your phone. But mm. my first phone I had was Snake and how much time I spent playing fucking Snake on my Nokia, whatever it was. It was the best. Well, we talked about this. JR used to play Snake on his phone a lot, but the real the real phone game that was amazing was Brick Breaker. Yeah, Brick Breaker. Breaker. Blackberry. Because yeah. if you made it through all the levels twice, it would never speed up, and you could go forever. And so I remember guys that were would come to, like, a house on a Friday night to go out and be free. They'd be like, oh, we need a charger. You guys, I need a charger. Like, my battery's going to die, and you couldn't take – if you took the battery out, it reset the Brick Breaker, remember? Yeah, if yep. your battery so, died, it would reset. If, you, if the battery died, it would reset. So you had to never let your phone die. And I remember people freaking out because they had they were on God like the fifty fourth time through the level. <laughs> yeah, the scores are just obscene. Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. Thing, uh, the other that's thing I found really memory lane. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that I found really interesting, and I won't dwell on this thing anymore because if you want to watch it, go watch it. But nowadays, if kids get stuck on video games, you can just go to YouTube and you yeah. can watch somebody who's playing the game. Guys like Ninja who just show you how to do it. Well, back we then. Have- Go ahead. We had a subscription to Nintendo Power at my house. Dude, <laughs> Nintendo Power was a magazine. But even oh, further than yeah. that, there was a, a hotline you could phone, get somebody on the call, and they were called Nintendo Game Counselor. And you could tell them exactly where you were, exactly what the problem was, and they would play the game with you at the time. And with their map in their binders, they'd help you and they'd tell you where secrets were. And they would help you get through the game. And so they wanted you. Because the faster you pass through a game, the faster you'd want a new game to play. So you'd have to go out and buy a new game. That's so they set up these huge call centers, to, and you'd literally phone them on your landline, and they would answer, and they'd play the game with you, and they'd get you through the part that you were stuck on. And you'd have to pay for the call, obviously. It was probably like a buck fifty a minute or something back then. But it was like a huge part of their business, was getting game counselors, and it actually highlights one game counselor story as to how he became a game counselor, the type of calls he had to field. He had to know everything about every game at the time. And when a new game came out, they didn't get like two weeks to play it. They got it the day it was released. Oh, and wow. so inev- inevitably you'd have them, you'd have people calling you that day, the day it was released, the day that they were playing it, asking you to get through stuff. And you'd be trying to work through it at the same time. It's fascinating. <laughs> it's a must watch, I believe. 
I, I actually am. I'm going to pull this up because that's really cool to me. I'd love the history lesson of like how this has all evolved and things like that. It'd be super dope. Not one more spoiler alert. The guy got the inspiration from Pac-Man because he couldn't figure out a game for uh, people to play. Um, and kind of women, he wanted to get more women into video games. And he knew that like a video game like Pac-Man would be good, but he couldn't figure out what the main character was going to be. And he was sitting, having lunch at a pizza parlor there, and they put a big pizza pie in front of him, and he pulled off his first slice, and he looked at the pizza, and he was like, there's Pac-Man. No and shit, that's eh? got- Whoa. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. That's super but cool. You, uh, I could talk about this for like another whole podcast. This is so good. <laughs> yeah. You've been, uh, you've been bringing the goods right at the end of podcasts lately. Oh, sorry. You've been saving the good content right <laughs> for the end. That's good. That's drawing people in. Leaves them wanting more. That's the key to broadcasting. Always leave them wanting more. Probably or something. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Who knows? (laughs) All right. Uh, This podcast was, it it was all over the place in a good way. We had some housing tips. We told stories of the Heritage Classic. Three out of the four of us did not have great stories about the Heritage Classic, but that's okay. And uh, the one thing that remained consistent throughout was Chalmers dropping weird little sexual innuendos at different points. So I appreciate (laughs) that. Like like littered the show with them. Like, (laughs) I I just, I, I, like, if you could, I could have said that's what she is. She's, ugh. I guess that's what I guess I can't say. That's what she said like thirty times. Um, a new drink, a new drinking game. You have to take a shot every time I drop a sexual innuendo. We <laughs> we no, should have but, a we should have a holiday drinking episode. When we just get oh. drunk and record. Your, your M Chuck, would you figure out the video end of things? Yeah. We will. Uh, we'll have a cheers to the to the nation. How 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 are we going to do that if we do like so they'll be able to see us? We'll be all in the same spot. So Chalmers, you just would be able to be driving in your car for this episode. Or parked You're in a stationary in a safe place. <laughs> yes, we yes, insist you have a rye and coke slurpee. Um, did I? By the way, did I see you drinking a Red Bull today, Chalmers? No, no. What was that yellow can you had in there? Oh, oh, oh. Um, it's the new Seven Up. It's the new Seven Eleven. Uh, new Seven Up. It's like uh, caffeine free Seven Up. Oh, I see it? Heck no way you going to put my business on blast. <laughs> is it a Red, yeah, Bull, free, is it here, a Red Bull Free 7 Up? God damn it. I got this new. I, I, I'm actually doing a little test. I got this new Whoop band. I don't know if you've ever heard oh, of it. Oh, yeah. yeah you got the Whoop. How is it? I got the Whoop. Um, it, it's good. I'm never. I'm not a watch guy, so I hate wearing watches. So it's kind of uncomfortable, but so I bought the arm strap as well. Also, I obviously work with my hands a lot, and I don't want to get it ruined, but I put it around my arm. Um. I like it. It takes it's taken about a week to kind of um, to set the parameters, kind of learn you, and so this was just a little test bag milk. That's all it was. Do you also wear it when you're sleeping to like get your all your sleep patterns? It has to. You gotta wear it twenty four seven. Yeah. How do you charge and it? And uh, it? It comes with this little charger that you charge, and then you just snap it on it. Oh and You wow. let it sit on it for like ninety minutes, and then you take it off, and that and it's charged. So That's cool. You're really never supposed to take it off. I take it off when I shower because I just. I'm not going to shower with it on, um, but it's been it's been pretty cool. Like uh, I uh, I had a really long, really fun Friday night, and uh, I got eight percent recovery on uh, Saturday morning from my sleep. So that was an eye opener. <laughs> Basically, what <laughs> what yeah, I they, noticed they, is, re- they really monitor your recovery and let you know kind of like where you're at. Well, they monitor, home. but but they do it not just with like they do heart rate vari- variability. They do like all this different type of like metric stuff that kind of shows you i don't know basically how rested how recovered you're going to be from the strain that you put on the day before you can also use it as like like the strava app where you go like we went on a hike on sunday i started at the hike gives you all you know it allows you to monitor you know how you what you did during the hike i mean it's pretty cool i like to see this kind of stuff i needed something to kind of get me back into um you know my fitness and uh so this one is is helpful due to the sleep. I actually like I knew that when I have a couple of drinks on the weekend that it's not great, but just to see the actual line graph of how not great it is mm. is quite eye opening. That might not be. I'm looking at it right now. See. Is there is there a, a monthly sub on this too? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's all it is. The band's free. You don't have to pay for anything for the band. You just pay a monthly subscription fee, and uh, you know you buy either a year or you can go monthly, and they send you the band. Dope, yeah. dope, dope, dope. All right, Let's wrap this thing up. Uh, remember, Real Life Podcast wants to help you with your Christmas shopping. Whether you want to check out the Blackout Collection that's available now as you're listening to it, you can go to nationgear.ca and check it out. A, a little birdie also told me 
It, it won't be for the blackout gear, but maybe for some other stuff on uh, nationgear.ca. It might be a promo code dropping. So uh, keep it locked on the podcast and all the social media for more of that. <laughs> also, head over and check out our friends at twigandberries.ca. Uh, why are you guys laughing? I don't know why you're laughing. I just, I just saw some seven up being consumed. <laughs> I, I, thought you, it now. I thought you were mocking I I've, I've my ad to, read. No, I've been trying to hide it the whole damn thing, but if you're going to put me on Front Street, I might as well just finish it off. Fair enough. <laughs> on Front Street. <laughs> uh, don't forget our friends at Twig and Berries. They have a holiday box. They're also doing some great Movember stuff. So go to twigandberries.ca. Also check them out on Instagram. We're always tagging them in posts and posting their stuff. But uh, check them out on Instagram. They're doing like some cool mustache-themed stuff. they got a Ron Swanson shirt going as well. Twigandberries.ca, great local company doing some great things. And uh, don't forget Oodle Noodle. If you want your holiday meal, I mean, that would be a great tradition to start this year. Get Oodle Noodle every year for the holidays. And if you go in-store, 10% of proceeds go to a local charity. It's a great time to be giving back a little. Oodle Noodle, 14 locations, 15 is coming right away. Real Life Podcast, episode 233. Guys, this was a ton of fun. So thank you. Talk to you again on Thursday. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Peru. Great job on making it through the entire hour of the Real Life Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from.